There are lots of videos how to lower cortisol, which of course is important, but I would say it's 50% of the success. The other 50% is cortisol metabolism. And that's especially important if you're busy, constantly on the go, or simply there is lots of going on in your life. And today I will share with you six tips and areas you should focus on and optimize to make sure your body breaks down and metabolizes cortisol quickly and efficiently so it doesn't cause the damage and you can feel calmer, lose weight or body fat and also sleep better and generally feel better. So let's start with why cortisol metabolism is so important. Imagine you go to the gym, work with deadline or worry about something. What happens? Your body spikes cortisol, which is like the normal response. And after you finish your workout, you submit your work or simply you stop worrying about something, the cortisol should drop and return to back to normal. But what happens if your cortisol metabolism is so cortisol doesn't drop and it stays elevated for basically longer than it should. And this is exactly where the damage happens. And by the damage, I mean fat gain, weight gain, feeling on edge, not sleeping well, or other hormone imbalances, PCOS, estrogen dominance, or even uh, endometriosis. So if you want to truly feel at your best, what you want to focus on is reduce stress from lower cortisol. But on the top of that, you want to also improve your cortisol metabolism. And this is basically the formula for your success and achieving your goals. So first tip or area I want you to optimize is a thyroid. I'm always saying thyroid is like the CEO of our body. So if your thyroid is sluggish, then also your cortisol metabolism will be sluggish. So the first thing you definitely want to make sure that thyroid is at the optimal level. Uh, on my website, you can go and check the functional medicine ranges for your uh, thyroid blood test results, uh, because what you want is to have your thyroid hormones, TSH as well, within like the optimal range, not within the standard lab ranges, because standard lab ranges are quite wide. So quite often what can happen the results are back you go to the doctor they will tell you like oh it's within the range but you feel maybe miserable maybe you wake up fatigue maybe you cannot lose weight or even slow metabolism and cold hands are just another signs that thyroid may be underactive or, or not optimal. I made another video on how to optimize thyroid in few steps, so I will put links in the description in case you would like to check it out. And today I will focus more in details on other areas that I haven't mentioned much uh, yet on my channel. And yeah, if you also like the content, find it useful, uh, don't forget to subscribe. So then tip number two, bile flow. Bile flow is pretty much linked with your liver. And unfortunately nowadays with all the toxins from like food, pesticides, and also from environment, liver is having hard times with all the, I would say work and the toxins to process. So that's something we definitely want to support and make sure our body produces enough bile because that will help you with cortisol metabolism as well. So if it comes to foods that support the bile production and bile flow are usually like those so-called bitter foods. And I for chicory root, ginger, lemon, artichokes and also uh, rocket arugula. So I would highly recommend to include at least one of those. For example, I personally like to chop a bit of endive with olive oil and like pumpkin seeds or like nuts and have it with my meal. I also drink lemon ginger water before my meal, so like throughout the day. Uh, so yeah, I would say pick one and incorporate that in your daily, uh, I would say, food uh, routine. Then also what's important, basically limit alcohol, sugar and other toxins, even like smoke, char, like burned food. Then tip number three, mitochondria. So mitochondria is this tiny little powerhouse in your body that like, makes energy and keeps uh, things going. So if your mitochondria are not working well or efficiently, that will have effect not only for your energy, but also like cortisol metabolism. And similar like with liver, mitochondria are having hard times because of all the toxins, but also diet uh, for some people if you are, for example, not consuming enough of the antioxidant. And from the test I've done with my clients, I would say I haven't seen a person that that would have the optimal mitochondria uh, function. So if you would like to do the test, Metabolomics uh, Plus is a great test to see all the organic acids linked with mitochondria and give you idea what's your health with mitochondria. But overall, like the top number one nutrient from mitochondria uh, are those antioxidants I mentioned. Berries and pomegranate. Pomegranate, absolutely like my number one. 
and also bell peppers, green tea, and overall like superfood powders. Uh, my favorite way to get those antioxidants in without consuming like tons of like fruits and vegetables is simply making smoothies and adding all those like superfood powder minerals into my smoothie. So I will put example of my super uh, superfood smoothie uh, in the description. So that's one thing, but also what you want to focus on are free radicals. And if it comes to like what are key sources of those like free radicals, the imagine compounds vegetable oils definitely like number one and the food nowadays especially like the packaged foods like the sauces as well as snacks are literally packed with vegetable oil sunflower oil canola oil rapeseed oil as well so if you haven't yet please like go and read the labels even though if it will extend your shopping time by i don't know five ten minutes it's definitely worth spending that extra time to reading the labels and kind of learning what are the, like those healthier foods and what foods ideally we should avoid if we uh, when we can and speaking of oils another uh, big one deep fried food so ideally avoid deep fried food grilled are fine but if it's deep fried and deep fried in vegetables oils yeah that's kind of like free a radical bomb then quite obvious one sugar alcohol which i already mentioned briefly and then uh, excess exercise so that's something like i haven't been aware for a long time and that's also how i pretty much damage my mitochondria to kind of like significant degree the good thing is about the mitochondria they can repair and regenerate uh, to a certain degree of course uh, so yeah exercise is healthy overall in moderation but if we exercise too much then unfortunately can generate those free radicals so if you're active, you definitely want to focus on antioxidants and also on your gut, which I will cover uh, in a second, because gut is like another, I would say, huge source of like inflammation and slower uh, cortisol metabolism. And exercise, unfortunately, can also uh, damage your gut. So that's, uh, I would say, something to uh, keep in mind. Okay, so let's go to tip number four, which is nutrient deficiency. There are key nutrients that are directly linked with cortisol metabolism and if you're lacking them uh, yeah basically your body will struggle with breaking down and clearing that uh, excess uh, cortisol so vitamin d vitamin c b vitamins generally plus magnesium and iron those i would say top uh, key nutrients if it comes to a uh, cortisol metabolism vitamin d c and magnesium i would say are quite hard to get from food i would say so for those you may consider like the supplementation for beef vitamins broadly speaking a variety of like good quality meat uh, fish uh, but also leafy greens and sweet potatoes and for iron uh, again grass-fed beef i mentioned earlier quite good source then tip number five combs gene not sure if you ever heard about combs gene but it's one of those genes uh, responsible basically for breaking down uh, cortisol so but it turned out actually that combs gene in my case were downregulated, which was just another contributor for basically my cortisol staying longer in the system uh, than it should anyway from food there are i would say four uh, key nutrients you want to focus B vitamins, especially B9, which is leafy greens, and B12 meets uh, X uh, fish as well. And then betaine and choline. Betaine, good source is beetroot, choline X. And on the top of that, antioxidants, which I explained with the mitochondria. So those four, I would say, key nutrient groups that uh, support your uh, comedian function and then also your cortisol and uh, metabolism. And the last one, tip number six, is basically your gut health and inflammation. There is like strong connection between your gut and the brain and it's also linked with your cortisol metabolism. So you definitely want to make sure your gut is healthy because if that's imbalanced, that will cause inflammation and with higher levels of inflammation, a cortisol metabolism will be impaired. So here for the gut, I have those like five non-negotiable uh, rules. Uh, the first one is 12 overnight fast. So basically overnight, there is a time where your body cleanse, detox as well. So if it's less than 12 hours, that process can be compromised and create uh, more inflammation. So 12 hours overnight fast, definitely a, a bare minimum. Uh, but if you know that you struggle with that high cortisol or like simply feeling on it, hard to switch off other hormone imbalances, 
then you also want to be mindful with prolonging the fast more than 16 hours. So I would say sweet spot between 12, 14 hours. So that way you also don't spike the uh, cortisol. Uh, then probiotics, which is basically the source of the good bacteria. I personally like goat kefir or kimchi sauerkraut but it can be any fermented food really. If it comes to like supplemental probiotics, I would rather be careful add unless you've done the test and you know you're lacking certain like good bacteria or you just use soy spore based biotics because on those I would say it's hard to overdo. But if you just take like regular lactobacilli, for example, strains or any other common strains uh, from supplements, it can also create the good bacteria overgrowth, uh, leads to SIBO and yeah, gut inflammation and other uh, problems as well. So with probiotics, again, best from food, unless you have particular reason to use the uh, supplement. And then probiotics is kind of like food for the uh, good bacteria. And uh, my favorite one, asparagus, uh, like yellow green banana, Apples, carrots, those are, I would say, good sources of prebiotics, but also good sources of soluble fiber, which is super important for a hormonal balance and a gut cleanse as well. Then also vitamin A, zinc and bone broth. So those are kind of like the nutrients for your gut lining. Uh, and again, if uh, you're either under a lot of stress or exercise a lot or any other source that could be damaging your gut lining then leading to food intolerances amongst others, then you definitely want to focus on those uh, top three. And then the last thing, uh, avoiding sweeteners or generally like excess sugar and excess, I would say toxic unhealthy foods. But sweeteners, I'm mentioning that because I know now it's kind of like a trend of sugar-free and uh, no other sugar products, which seems healthy. But when you read the label, you see, for example, erythritol that actually can increase that gut inflammation. So to be on the safe side, I would say if you want to have something sweet, just have honey or like just normal sugar in moderate amount, which I usually would say don't go more than 50, 60, maybe 70 grams if you're super active per day of all sugars. And yeah, just avoid those like new trendy uh, sweeteners.